Good morning, noon, evening or night, depending when you're watching this video. My name is I Legend, and welcome back to World of Tanks and the greatest of games, in which we look at several great games within those the most important decisions, actions or elements you can learn from. And in this episode, we are going to look at engagements between one against multiple enemies. So. In this replay I am playing in the T-52, the old school light tank reintroduced back into the game, tier 6 Soviet light tank, well that went well, <laughs> and I am playing at Berlin and I immediately wanted to claim the bunker, because first of all RT safe, second of all great overview and third I am the top tier light tank, fastest one here and if I get rushed by anything I am able to put on a fight but for the meantime I have no real competition for the bunker so I can scurry a little bit around looking if there are some targets I can fire my shots at however not a lot happens right inside of the bunker it is when I'm getting out of it when the P43 is rushing me now I'm actually going out here because this way I'm not getting blocked inside the bunker traps like that and at this moment I'm doing something very interesting don't see it that often but I'm doing a peak a boo drive-by so between these kind of solid covers with a only small gap in between them if I'm traveling fast forwards and backwards I can fire quickly in between those pieces of cover and the enemies have a very little amount of time to fire back at me especially when they are not auto aimed at me they have a very little amount of time align their fire and hit me so this is quite a effective strategy if you are trying to peek fire and get back to cover not a lot of situations allow this i mean the whole cover itself is not that often seen around many maps and also the gun handling of the t52 is still quite good which allowed you to do that and you saw that also against the p43 when i'm not auto aimed at him the rules get also reversed and you will also get some trouble actually aligning your shot well so do use auto aim in in this case if you can especially when the targets are not moving or moving either more towards you or away from you this strategy was quite interesting and fun to use so after the whole peak a boo bit right there in the middle i'm seeing that the upper flank is having some trouble with only the Panzerkopfwache 4 left i decided to actually flank uh, engage the enemy heavies in the city from an unexpected flank. This can result into disaster of course, but since I'm keeping somewhat of a distance, I can quickly retreat and it's not that light tanks are fully at a disadvantage within a city because if you drive away, you can quickly go around corners, around the buildings in order to escape enemy fire. And like that, I'm able to shut down the Churchill one with only getting one shot back. Well, just barely, not in time to retreat fast enough. But like that, I am already out of there since enemies are now redirecting their attention at me, at least the Churchill 7. I don't want to get fired at once again, so I am going to drive further and look for another engagement from a, an expected angle. So driving around the enemy cap I eventually meet up with the M10 which almost turned his turret on time but since I'm getting towards him from the back he wasn't in time. Not that weird actually since his turret rotation is quite bad. And like that having another angle at the enemies I am now setting the PK right there into a crossfire and he also gets shut down however still my team is struggling i try to go towards them and help them but unfortunately it is too much for them and i get into a one versus three situation the first thing to do is to make distance and use my mobility 
I mean, the Matilda Black Prince, the Church of Seven, and the KV2 are not well known for their mobility. I mean, two of them are heavies, and well, for a medium, the Matilda Black Prince is quite slow. So I'm fully utilizing my mobility, also my view range, and my camo in order to outspot them and engage them as carefully, safely, and strategically as possible. And here a great example, which I utilize this stratagem on the Matilda Black Prince. However, presumably the KV2 is capping. The second thing I want to do right here in this one versus three situation is to get an unexpected angle on the cap. Once again, mobility, camo, few rings allows me to do this, allows me to get an angle, which the KV2 is not expecting me to come from which allows me quite easily when I get into the right position to hit him and reset the cap. However, I never stay at the exact same position because, well, KV2 is now in cover for that and I am again moving around in order to get towards a other unexpected angle. And like that, just chipping away the hit points further and further, but still making sure that I'm not getting outspotted or something like that. And with this, I would eliminate the KV2 and get some extra shots off at the Churchill 7. Although I'm kind of unlucky, missing there and bouncing also. But then surprisingly, the Matilda Black Prince was camping somewhere, which was kind of strange because I only got spotted after I fired my last shot, actually. So it's just just a bad timing that the Matilda Black Prince is there, but luckily he misses, giving me also some luck, which is also a bit of this strategy. I mean, that's the third thing, of course, getting lucky on occasion. I mean, you g <laughs> this game is so RNG based that you can actually not win that easily against multiple enemies unless they are themselves are quite unlucky. However, I find myself also a bit unlucky there, so I think there is a fair balance. So at this point, it is pretty much game. I can once again use that strategy to relocate and get an unexpected angle. I've said that word a lot of times, but it is very important in these kinds of situations. So I move around this city corner block. I aim at the Churchill. And he snapshots me and hits, of course. During that time, I didn't really know that Six Sense didn't go off if after you have been destroyed. So I was extra mad about this result because I thought I was not spotted and he just luckily blindfight me. But it is well quite assumable that I indeed was spotted, but he was still extremely lucky on hitting that snapshot and ah well, I, I deserved a win right there, I mean I did a lot of things good, not only a little bit lucky against that Matilda, but well I, I guess, well, that's the game, that's, that's the game, still, still, still a good result. And well, you might see, of course, the whole thing about a one versus many engagement in a light tank, mobility, camo, and spotting range will get you a far way in order to um, use multiple angles on your enemies. And that whole peekaboo drive by as an extra interesting little strategy if you find yourself in that situation. Next, we are watching It's Got Lease in his Type 62. Once again, a top tier light tank, which was also the case in my own replay. But well, it's basically, it's not a different strategy if you are a bottom tier light tank. The only thing different is that you have to be more careful. It's like hard mode, of course, because you have less his points, probably less mobility, less everything, so it is harder to pull those things off, but it's still kind of the same strategy. So in this game, it's got least is doing what every spotter is normally doing at this map, and that is getting into initial location in order to spot the other side. But it seems that it's got least is really keen on firing even in those positions. 
something that we see him do actually multiple times. I think the previous replay he also had a great spotting location, but he also fired at it. Hold your fire. He's... But, but despite of that, he's top tier. He can take that risk and not losing that much of HP. So he happily goes further with his spotting run. Now you actually you're learning instantly from his early mistakes and using the bushes correctly. But it takes a while after something else happens. And it is when and the T-34S is making his way towards in the middle. It's got at least almost instantly recognized this threat and is making his way towards the S-35 in order to support him. Very good quick reactions in order to focus down isolated targets. Uh, well, it's quite presumable that the T-34S is isolated right here, although there was one more AMX you'll see right there, but he also gets shut down very easily. There's just like that, getting easy kills on isolated targets. However, this time it's kind of a reversal with that first initial spot, because now he's actually forgetting this kind of good intuition and misses the E25, which is making his way around the back towards his cap. Only when it is too late and the E25 is in the ass of the artillery and tank destroyers, is it got least making his way back towards the cap in order to support him. But it's kind of too late. However, this will result into something very very interesting because right now he is in fact getting into a one versus multiple enemies situation. So how will he deal with this? First, make sure that at least one damaging shot goes off into the M10 before the E25 shows up. Then let the E25 engage, outflank him and shoot him back. Use the dead E25 to engage the M10, sitting hull down and shutting him down. Then repeat the same strategy with the Panzer 4H. And then outflanking him, completely humiliate him. Physical recovery six weeks, full psychological recovery six months. And that's how you do that one versus three situation. Well, one versus three. He caught his targets very isolated. You saw there that its got least was very keen on only getting into a one versus one at all times. The timing of the Panzer 4 H was of course a little bit too late in order to really get in there on time. But still, that kind of action can consider a three against one because if it's got least was fully engaged on the M10 and trying to outflank him, he had still the E25 and the Panzer 4 8 at the same time. But it's got least was a very clever pullback and make sure that he was only facing one of them each time. However, after this engagement, it's got least really should relocate himself towards C3 in order to help his Poodle more out and be more impactful against the other enemy tanks. But still, it results into a 1 against 5 this way. So for the rest of the battle, it's got least able to engage the artillery, shutting him down in one shot. However, now the enemies are pressuring the cap. Tries to make his way back, but he meets the KV-2 and unfortunately he does decide to fully stop instead of driving further in order to maybe have some impact on saving the cap. But even then the setter also shows up right behind him and now there isn't enough time to get back towards the cap. One desperate blind shot doesn't do the deal and he unfortunately loses. So yeah, we saw actually a few mistakes from its got lease here on positioning wise. He did uh, engage the T-34S very well, recognizing him as an isolated target, which is easy to pick off, especially when you are two tiers higher than it. But then the E-25 went into his blind spot or something like that. And after his engagement, he disengaged fully from the fight, deciding to go for the artillery instead of supporting his ally tank. Well, he could still be shut down by the artillery that way, but well, artillery, if he misses, then he had a way higher chance. 
winning. When he encountered the KV2, he didn't try further, decided to fully stop instead of going back and try to reset the cap that way. But still, a great battle and especially that one versus three situation was done excellently, making it very fast paced, which you need to do very quick, uh, quick decision making on those cases, which he did very well. And with that, this is already the end of this video. Only two replays, because these were the only two replays with this kind of a one versus multiple enemy engagement. And with that, that's the end of the video, and I will see you next time. Laters!